In April of 1900, 36 Blythe Road would be the stage for one of the most well-known battles of wizards that London would ever see. At its heart were two of the most infamous aspirants battling over the right to lead the next generation into the future. Would the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn fall into the hands of the wickedest man in the world? Or would it move forward as the highest school of metaphysical arts? Find out now as we explore the battle of Blythe Road and ask... What the fuck? Hello, everybody, and welcome to my library. During the turn of the century, life in England was so boring and repressive that even rich white dudes had to make secret clubs just to troll each other, to keep looky-loos from knowing about all the anti-socialism, elitism, and man-on-man butt sex going on. Most of these groups created an aura of mystery around them that led to a lot of rumors of witchcraft, devil worshipping, and satanic rites being carried out. The truth is, these are just bored people who like being better than everybody else, even though they're really just sad sack, pathetic people begging for a little attention. You know, Playmate Tessie. One of these clubs was known as the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Apparently, William Robert Woodman, William Wynn Westcott, and Samuel Little Mathers. Ah, I actually said it right. Felt like the Freemasons just weren't D&D &D enough. So they made their own club where you were allowed to believe your own bullshit. Soon after, Woodman realized how absolutely ridiculous all this was and decided to retire, leaving Westcott and Mathers in charge. By the way, Mathers changed his name to McGregor Mathers after a while because apparently being a white savior was a thing back then too. Now the hierarchy of the Golden Dawn works like this. There are three levels. Woodman, Westcott, and Mathers are on the second level, known as the Adepts. They have a working knowledge of magic and how it works, but they also aren't fully masters yet. That level is held especially for what is known as the Secret Chiefs. These are the teachers that all members learn from, but yet only talk to the Adepts. At the bottom of the pyramid are the Aspirants. These are the people that are learning the basics. According to the Golden Dawn bylaws, the only way for an Aspirant to move up to an adept, you must spend years giving your money, I mean, uh, concentration to mastering certain skills and rights. One of the schmucks that is legitimately trying to move up his way in, in the ranks is famous poet William Butler Yeats. Like many of the aspirants, he was brought into the Golden Dawn by Willie Westcott. Westcott and his lovely band of losers believe that the magic should be learned, but rarely practiced to maintain some sort of metaphysical balance. Yeats and many other celebrities of the time were recruited to give the Golden Dawn some level of clout. I imagine to avoid taxes. On the other end of the spectrum, Mathers was a staunch believer in pushing the magical envelope, researching new rites and using magic to try to take over the world which fell right in line with the goals of one certain Alistair Crowley. You see, everything that Yeats was, Crowley was the opposite. Yeats was well-liked in the Golden Dawn. Crowley was the guy who'd come into the party and scream, I'll fuck anything that moves! Yeats wrote well-loved and skillfully worded poetry. Crowley wrote stupid little limericks about his own jizz. Yeats was willing to spend time learning and earning his way to becoming an adept. Crowley, being an egotistical douche, hated the very idea of waiting for tea. So this is pretty much the basis of the conflict in the subject of today's video. While Westcott's group was perfectly content getting around the table and playing some tabletop D&D on occasion, Mathers' group 
insisted that everyone get costumed and start LARPing 24-7. Exacerbating this massive nerd fight was Westcott's day job finding out that he belonged to a troll club and telling him that it's either the magic or your job. Being the wage slave that we all are, Westcott decided to keep his job. This left the Golden Dawn completely in the hands of Mathers, which was an incredibly unpopular decision. The, the aspirants came to Westcott and begged him to come back which he was able to do. Mathers then began saying that Westcott wasn't legitimate because he had left. Now, if you remember, I told you that reaching the second level in the Golden Dawn required years of learning and research. Crowley is far from being a patient man. He was able to convince Mathers that he should be an adept without all of the, you know, working that is required for it. Mathers, seeing his chance to get a leg up in controlling the Golden Dawn, agreed. So he made it known that he and Crowley were going to come to Blythe Road Temple to add Crowley's name to the list of adepts. West guy called bullshit. He hasn't done the work, and honestly, nobody here even likes him. Just a disclaimer, a lot of the sources that I found while researching this situation gave it the gravitas of, of the Battle of Hornsburg, or as some people like to call it, the Battle of Helm's Deep in Lord of the Rings. Not me. No, I, I want you to grasp, fully grasp, the massive level of cringe that is about to unfold furrow before you. Okay, now, imagine you walk outside your house for a smoke or fresh air or to let your dog take a shit or whatever, and your neighbors are full-on screaming at each other in, the fr in their front yard over whether they should be full-on, 100% LARPing 24-7 in full cosplay and everything. You honestly couldn't care less about the situation, but you're mildly entertained, so you just keep watching. Just, to, just for cringe factor and the absurdity of it all. A lot of people may get angry that I don't properly respect the situation. That's because I don't. Wes got prepared for this massive wizard battle by conjuring all of his metaphysical knowledge, skills, and secrets to change the locks. Mather showed up ready to do whatever he needed to do to get into 36 Blythe Road. Crowley, on the other hand, showed up in full Highland Tartan regalia with a black crusader's cross on his chest. Some people say that he was even wearing a black Osiris mask, but I can't find any confirmation of that. Knowing Crowley, though, I wouldn't doubt it. Somehow, Mathers and Crowley were able to make it into the house, take the room that contained the records, and lock out all the members of the Golden Dawn. If you've ever had any doubt about Crowley's reputation as an immature, spoiled, rich kid, let that be put to rest, because what he does next screams elementary school revenge plot. Crowley took the list of Golden Dawn adepts, scrawled out Westcott's name, and wrote his own in the border of the page. Now's the time I get to introduce you to the absolute goat of this story. The true hero among all of these happy idiots. The major difference between the Golden Dawn and the other troll clubs that were popular in that day was that the Golden Dawn actually allowed women in their ranks. This included a wonderful lady by the name of Maud Cracknell. She was the Dawn's assistant secretary and therefore the person in charge of the Blythe Road Temple. She'd already had to put Crowley out of Blythe Road once before when he demanded entrance to the Adept's quarters. This time, she was a lot less patient. Get 
out. Not until you call me an adept of the Golden Dawn. I'm calling the cops. No, wait. So that's exactly what she did. The cops came and ejected Crowley and Mathers from the building. Crowley, who left on a protest, was heard yelling for blocks down the street. Crowley, now realizing what he's up against, conjured up every bit of his energy and magical ability within him. He performed every rite and cast every spell that he could think of. Mathers hired two goons to accompany Crowley, and guess what? They showed up two hours after everything went down. So when all that failed, Crowley begged the landlord to let him in. Once inside, Crowley took off like a rocket, running up the stairs, making signs of the inverted pentagram and cursing every aspirant that he saw. When Yeats heard about what was going on, he made good on his name, came around the corner at the top of the stairs, and front kicked Crowley right back down those stairs. I'll call the cops. And that's it. Crowley tried to sue Yeats and the Golden Dawn, but failed. He went on to create Thelema, 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 and gained a reputation of being the wickedest man in the world. Yeats carried on his career and is considered one of the greatest poets of his time. Mathers was eventually ousted and had a falling out with Crowley. It could be argued that the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn is still around, but any hope of them ever being a real thing died out in the 70s. I'd say that the most famous true wizard battle ended with a fizzle instead of a bang. But, truthfully, it never got above a slight friction burn. A group of LARPers got into a fight over egos and it ended with no one really winning, despite what Crowley says. Yeah, Crowley claims that he won. Guess why? Because of that one time that he was able to get in there and like write his name in, in, in like the, the corner of the book. Yeah. He says that he won because of that. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then be sure to like and subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss the next episode of History 10 WTF. And with that, good night, everybody.